Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for what has been, yes, on the surface, quite a difficult show this morning, but um, at its heart, something that is unbelievably valuable and enriching. And this morning, we are focusing on overcoming trauma. According to bullyingstatistics.org, 94% of girls and 65% of teenage boys have been body shamed. And over the years, celebrities who have experienced this type of bullying have come out to talk about their experiences. And the latest is radio presenter Stacey Norman, who after being body shamed by social media trolls recently, has decided to speak out against cyber bullying. Stacey now joins us to tell us more about her experience on a day that she says she's taken off as a mental health day. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you, man? Come on. Um, the, thank you so much for being brave enough to do this thank because you. everyone is very clearly brave enough to pass a random comment online, not understanding, and it doesn't matter who you are. And just because there's this distance and space between you, you think maybe it's not affecting a person. But I can, I can tell you from my own experience as a big tough guy that my experiences with just random glib comments online, when it's focused, when it's scathing, when it's an attack, what led you to the point of wanting to speak out about this? How bad did it get for you? Sure, I mean, the truth is this hasn't been like a, an ongoing thing um, at all. It was a post last week that had nothing to do with anything. Wow. That we put up on our Facebook page. It, I think there was a, it was about a nose ring and our digital producer put a Snapchat filter on me and said, do you think Stacey should get a nose ring? Because I know that my mother's watching and she would have never allowed me to have gotten a nose ring. And then it was one random comment. Hi, mom. Yeah. Hey, mommy. Uh, one random comment and then people just started piling on. But it wasn't about the nose ring. It then was about my body and they're sort of picking me apart and I need to eat a sandwich and I need to like grow certain body parts. And what was upsetting, honestly, about it was that it was all from women, actually. And I just... It felt like, I think it's been a rough year. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, apparently this is where the line is. And I just, I was like, that's it, I'm done. Why? Why do you think this is, as a woman, and I'm hoping that you, you will have at some point wanted to, because we've all kind of made comments and we all want to jump on something that's gone viral, but why do you think people latched onto that specifically? I don't know. Like, Is there a reason? No. Um, in fact, I decided I'm going to do this on air. Um, I host a drive show on East Coast Radio with Jay Spoo, and he, was, he asked the same question. And he's like, I'm, I'm a man, so I don't understand this. So can the women please explain? And what was shocking was all these WhatsApps started coming through, like thousands of them, from women going, so your name is obviously there, we can see your name. Yeah. But then her going, I'd like to remain anonymous. I have this at work. I'd like to remain anonymous. I have wow. this with my sister-in-law. So I don't know if it's a 2020 thing. I don't know if it's a patriarchy thing. I don't know what it is. But this thing of like, I am unhappy, I must project. But in a space where we can see your information, it's not even that it's anonymous. And I'm, I'm like, it, does that make it better or worse? Because it feels yeah. so brazen, so brazen. Um, and this is something that, I mean, international celebrities, and you kind of feel that you're, you're kind of bulletproof when you're out there as, as someone who's in the media, that you've chosen to put yourself out mm, there into mm, this public yeah. um, you know, domain. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, we, we're all trying to do a particular kind of job because you want to affect as many people positively as you can. When you feel this kind of negative backlash, how did that make you feel? I mean, the fact that you said that is amazing because after I went on air and there was this massively overwhelming positive response to me having said what I said, um, people went, but that's what you get. Yeah. You've chosen a life where people know you. I'm, I can assure you nobody runs down the street calling my name. I, have, I haven't signed an autograph or a small child in a long time. <laughs> it's all selfies. Um, There's no autographs exactly, anymore, girl. It's all selfies. Exactly. Corona. Um, but I don't agree with that. Um, if, if you don't like the work, you know, and I'm sure that there's something you can understand. If someone goes, listen, I just think like maybe this needs a bit like crit here and there and it's constructive. That's tough enough. But to come at you on a personal level is specifically... What? I always use the, the analogy, what if someone stopped you, a random stranger stopped you in the streets, okay, in a non-public forum and said, wow, mm. what you're wearing right now makes you look like an idiot. You know, like, uh, how would that make you feel in that sense? And it, it becomes deeply personal. Mm. How do we stop this? Can we stop this? Do we just have to adapt in the way that we, or do we just ignore it? How do we deal with, how have you gotten to a point where you can be okay with this, or are you? No, I'm not okay with this. Um, I will be fine. Um, it actually hit me harder than I thought it was going to. I was like, it's four or five people 
on in, in one small moment in my life. And I can apply the context, I'm a whole grown up, but it was specifically difficult for me to bounce back from. And I think maybe that's partially because I know it's probably not gonna stop. Mm. So the more visible you become, the more exposed you are, and the more people feel like they have license to just rip into you for whatever reason, they're having a bad day or whatever. How do we control it? I don't think we can, because I think people will always be unhappy. And if you ask me why, if we don't know why, we can't predict if it'll ever stop. Um, people just like to make you feel bad sometimes, and that's a weird thought, because you would never do that. And it's not about you being a martyr, just like you would never like comment on someone's post and go, you look something you know, insanely mean today. You would never do that. Well, maybe the answer is doing what you're doing right now, is owning it and, and being brave enough to talk about it and work through the emotions that are attached to something that is incredibly ugly. Um, we've experienced it in some parts. I think you know the fact that people latch onto the viral element of something like that and think they're just part of the crowd, maybe yes, the crowd mentality yeah. kicks in. But you're amazing. You don't have to change a single thing about you. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Greg. I appreciate Except that. Except maybe your timing for your, your mental day <laughs> off. Maybe that's something you want that to think about. Um, but um, clearly, you are doing all the right things right now to push back against cyberbullying. And hopefully, this will make other women and other people brave enough to be able to put their foot down and maybe pass the right kind of comment or shut up and don't say a thing. That's a thing, and I mean, just a, a note to everybody, thousands and thousands of tweets and DMs and emails and Facebook posts in support. And everyone's gone through something like this at some point. So... You ain't alone, yeah. Yeah, we're stronger together. Let that go viral. Um, we are dealing with trauma today, and I'm dealing with some incredibly brave women who are exposing themselves on quite a deep level and teaching me a huge amount. So hopefully you feel exactly the same. We'll continue on that path in just a moment.